Praise the Lord, hallelujah. I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus as you, as we're going to hear the word. The Lord is a God who wants to speak to each and every one of us. He loves us and he wants us to be a people that we will glorify him in our lives, that we'll be the people who will honor him in our lives, hallelujah. Because when we honor him, he will honor us. Psalms 91 says, when we honor the Lord, when we acknowledge him, he will honor us. Yes, we want to be we want to be blessed in our lives. We need to honor God in our lives. We need to learn to honor Him. We need to learn to please Him in our lives. Hallelujah. So this important, the very most important thing is to grow spiritually in our lives. To be spiritually minded people. It is spiritually mindedness God God looks at. Hallelujah. How much we are, how much we are growing in the spirit, which is more important for the Lord. Hallelujah. That we may grow spiritually. That we may not be the people who will be drinking milk, but we the people who will be people who will eat solid food. Hallelujah. We take on, look at the book of Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Hallelujah. <coughs> Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Thank you, Father. We know we God, we worship you. Hebrews chapter 5, verse 12 to 14. Thank you, Jesus. He says, in fact, in fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths of God's word all over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, still being still an infant, is not acquainted with the teaching about righteousness. But, but solid food, but solid food is for the mature. He says, but the solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained themselves. Who by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good and evil. Wow, hallelujah. We are called to have solid food. Why? Why the solid meat? Because when we take hold of that, when we mature in the spirit, what happens? We train ourselves to distinguish what is good and evil, what is right and what is wrong. So in that, when we do that, we are living a life that is holy and pleasing unto God. If we keep drinking milk and, and we do not mature in God's word, mature in, a, mature in, in the spirit, we will only will be fighting in the elementary truths. We will be sinning today, again tomorrow we will be doing, again we will go and repent. And again, again, sin the same, doing the, doing the same sin again, falling in the same sin again. We are not maturing. We are not, and we think we are holy people. We are sinning and we are repenting and we are doing, uh, but we are not living, we are not maturing in the spirit. We are not growing in the spirit. How important it is for God to, uh, when we have children in our homes, if the children are not growing, if the children are not maturing in the sense, uh, in their body, they are not growing in their bodies and something is wrong, we run to the doctor to see what is wrong with the child. We understand that the child at this age has to come to this level. When the child is growing, you know what the child has to do at that age. We, are very, we, are, we know and we understand what it is in the physical. We know what the child needs to eat at a certain age and after a certain age, we don't give him the same thing which he is eating at the age of one or two. We don't give him the same meat, uh, the same food, what he is eating at the age of one, when he is when he's reached ten. We give him the, uh, the food that, that he needs at the age of ten, not the food that he, eat, uh, that he was eating at the age of one. We know what it is in the physical realm, but in the spiritual realm, we, are, we got to understand the things of God. We have to understand and we need to mature in our, in, our, in, in our understanding in who, what we are, who we are and how we need to walk, what we need to, how we need to speak, what we need to speak, or what we need to think, the thoughts, in, we need to be matured in our thinking. We should not allow any, any thoughts to control us, any emotional thoughts, emotional, negative emotions, negative feelings should not control our minds, control our thoughts. If you are not growing in that in that understanding, if you are not growing that we are the we are the beloved of Christ, that Jesus loves us, 
that he is for us and he is with us every moment of our lives the child the child does not understand unless and until he sees the child physically the father and mother a 2 years old a 3 years old child if he does not see the child the child does not see the father and mother physically he will start crying he will be looking for the father and the mother because the child does not understand that's why it will be crying for 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 the child for the parents he'll be crying for for help because it's a small child it has not matured but when it comes to the age of 10 he will not be crying for if he doesn't see his father and mother <coughs> he will not be behaving like how the child is at the age of 1 he will behave in a different manner in the same way when we come into our level when we grow when we come to christ when we come into the understanding of who we are in christ we need to grow in our understanding we need to grow in that wisdom and that understanding that's why uh, the the uh, in proverbs chapter 4 verse 20 it says uh, we need to we need to understand and we need to take hold of god's word and we take hold of take hold of his understanding that who we are in him when you need to take hold of when we take hold of that understanding we will grow in that understanding then we will mature in that understanding and then we will behave in that manner we will live in that manner we will speak in that manner hallelujah thank you jesus that's why it says but solid food is for the mature who by constant use have trained have trained themselves so the training is left to us god will never train us he will give us that understanding but if we don't take hold of that understanding and train ourselves that yes when i understand who i am my identity is very very clear about who i am my identity in christ my life in christ my standing in christ where i am who i am with whom i am who is with me who is in me who dwells in me who lives in me who has already provided for me hallelujah he is the alpha and the omega the beginning and the end of my life he is the source of all goodness there is nothing that is lacking because i do not lack for anything because he is the lord of my life the shepherd of my soul every everything that i need pertaining to life will be provided because he is my father he is my god he is my great i am he is a good god and he loves me and he calls me by name if that when when we grow in this understanding when we grow in that in that in that fullness of who we are in christ then we grow then we move from one level to another level and we become mature and we become solid and we become strong in ourselves that is what god look god is looking for hallelujah thank you jesus shoka yala barandar kalaba hallelujah thank you lord in second peter chapter 3 verse 18 grow in the grace and the knowledge of our lord and savior jesus christ hallelujah grow in what grow in the grace and the knowledge see grace comes uh, come to us but more, we need to we need to grow in that grace how do i grow in that grace when i understand when i read the word when i mature myself when i understand and uh, have that understanding of god's word because god's word is god's grace god's word is god's grace the power behind the, the power is in his word and when we understand the word the grace that is in that word will increase in us <clears throat> and when the grace increases in us we become more and more strong and we become more so mature in ourselves hallelujah we cannot live the we cannot be the same people what we were t- t- one year back or two years back or three years back we cannot be the same people we cannot walk in the same ma- in the same manner in the same talk and the s- i see so many believers today i see so many believers today it breaks me breaks my heart when they cry for even for small things they cry, they call out for they call for prayers which are i mean it's it it's it's such an uh, insult actually you feel 
I mean, where we are, what we are, how we are walking, in, in what way we are walking. The word of God says we are seated with Christ in the heavenly places. We are heirs to the throne of God. Joint heirs with God. Joint heirs with Christ. <coughs> we are called to rule and reign with him. The grace of God has been poured into our hearts. We are more than conquerors. But today Christians are filled with fear. Gripped with anxiety. Worried about even the small thing. Worried about even the smallest thing is that shakes them up. That moves them, breaks them. Small thing happens, they are shaken. Small thing happens in their, to their children, they are completely born, gone. Hallelujah. But our understanding is so, that's why, that's why he says, but solid, is, solid food is for the mature. Are we the matured? That's a question we need to ask. <coughs> Hallelujah. So, as I go through this, then how do we grow in the Lord? How do we grow spiritually? What is the first thing that we need to have? The first thing that we need to have is to cultivate a hunger for God. You need to cultivate a hunger. A thirst for God. Many of us do not have that hunger and the thirst for Him. We have every other need. We, we, we go to God for every other need. But we do not ask, Lord, I want more of you in my life. More of your presence in me, O oh God. I am thirsty for your presence, Lord. I am hungry for you, O oh God. That your glory, that your glory will be in me. That your, that your presence will be in me, O oh God. And David says in Psalm 42, 1, Oh, as a deer panted for the waters, as a deer panted for waters, so, O oh God, my soul longeth for you, O oh God. My soul longs for you, Master. Yes, Lord. In Revelation chapter 22, verse 17, the, the spirit and the bride says, come, hallelujah. God is calling us to come. In Revelation 21, verse 6, it is the Lord who is calling us to come and to drink of him. He said to the woman at the well, in the fourth chapter of Gospel of John, he says, if only you knew who I am, you would ask. You would ask for me. Because I can give you what you do not have. Because you need me. You need me in, my, in your life. Everything else will never satisfy your life. Only you, only it's all about me. Have me in your life. Have my fullness in, in you, hallelujah. Let, you, let my presence be in you, hallelujah. My glory dwell in your heart. But I very rarely see Christians asking me to pray. Brother, please pray, brother, that, that I might have the fullness of Christ in my life. That I might have uh, that I might have the Lord dwelling in me in richly, hallelujah. That I may have a hunger to read more of his word, Lord. That I pray, brother, that I might have a hunger for his presence, hunger for his word. Pray, brother, that I might have, uh, 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 that I may desire to, to serve him and to honor him in my life. Very few, I can, I've seen people coming and asking these questions. Hallelujah. That's why the first point is, you should cultivate a hunger and a thirst for God. Hallelujah. <coughs> Jesus always had this, uh, this, he always had the presence of the Father always with him. He says, I and the Father are one. He says, I and the Father are one. We are one. Hallelujah. He, he, he was never separated from the Father. He always carried the presence of the Father in him. Hallelujah. The glory of the Father inside of him. I am in him and he is in me. Hallelujah. We are one, he said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then he said, now I am in you and you are in me. Hallelujah. Are we conscious of the presence? Are we conscious of his presence in us? His glory in us? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that's why we need to practice the presence of God. Practicing his presence. It does not come easily. You need to practice the presence. 
You need to sit. You need to ask the Lord, Lord, wash my conscious, Lord, with your precious blood. Wash this conscious of mine, O God, with your precious blood, O Lord, that I be, that I be holy. That I may feel you, O God, that I may see you, O God. That I may experience you, O God, every moment, O Lord. That you'll come to a place that you'll be so conscious of, 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 of him that you'll be one with him in his presence. That is possible. <clears throat> I read about one brother, his name is Brother Lawrence in, in, in the 17th century. This, uh, there's a book, Practicing the Presence of God. He, he wrote about his, uh, how he cultivated the, 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 how, the, the practice of, of the presence of God. Hallelujah. It did not take, it, it, he, had to, he had to work on it. Hallelujah. He worked on that. He worked on that. He he was he was in the he was actually having some problem defects in his body, but he would be so he was he was practicing that so much that even as he was working in the kitchen, he was cutting the vegetables, he was cutting the things, but he was creating that atmosphere. Lord, you are present here, Lord. Your presence is here with me. Your glory is here with me, Lord. Hallelujah. So he was he was creating. He was creating that atmosphere. He was creating that uh, that mindset uh, that uh, that he is in his presence. That God is with him. The reality is the Lord is there with you, but we are not conscious of his presence. That takes that. That's why we need to die to ourselves so that we will be alive to him. Die to ourselves. We are so alive to everything and anything, everything and anything outside, but we are not alive and, and conscious of his presence in us. That comes with over a period of time when you, when you take, when you become conscious of that every moment, hallelujah. You need to practice it. It doesn't come, hallelujah, easily. You need to die to yourself and become conscious of his presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. The second thing is prayer and intimacy with God. Hallelujah. <coughs> First thing is to cultivate the hunger for, for, for and thirst for God. And second one is prayer. It's an intimacy. Hallelujah. If you read in every gospel, in, in Matthew chapter 14, verse 23, Mark chapter 6, verse 46, Luke chapter 6, verse 12, Mark 1, Chapter, chapter 1 verse 35 in Luke chapter 5 verse 16. In all these scriptures, we see Jesus coming out of the crowd and going into the mountain and praying. Hallelujah. Coming out of the people, coming out of all everybody and giving, uh, going alone into the, into the mountain and praying. Hallelujah. He was alone with the Lord. He was alone with the Father. Praying giving time in his, uh, having an intimacy with God, intimacy with him, hallelujah. That intimacy with God is so important, my brothers and sisters. The time in his presence is so important. The prayer that we need to have, that relationship with the Father, the relationship with the Lord, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is in us. The Holy Spirit brings us into the presence of God. And it is he who brings us uh, into the fullness of God, hallelujah. It is he who teaches us to pray. It is he who helps us to pray. <coughs> it is he who, who brings the, the words of life out, out of us. Hallelujah. That when we pray in the spirit, what happens? We are becoming one with God. Hallelujah. We are, we are becoming one with him in, in the spirit. And there's a prayer that is coming out from the spirit. A prayer which is coming out through his word. When we have the word, when the word of God is in your heart, you will pray through the word. You will have a communication with God through his word. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When Moses, when God was about to destroy the children of Israel because they were making a calf out of the gold. He, God was about to destroy the whole of all the children. Hallelujah. Because they were... Uh, they were doing idol, idol worship, hallelujah. But Moses, Moses came and intervened in the middle and he prayed and he asked the Lord, remember what you have promised to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Remember Lord what you have said. 
You see, he took hold of God's own word, what he said, what he had made a covenant with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. Moses remembered that what God said and he reminded God and he said, Lord, you cannot do this because you have given your word to your patriarchs, to Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. You have given your word, Lord. And then God relented. God relented. He did not do what he was about to do because he was reminded. Not that God won't, does not remember. But see the intimacy that Moses had with God. The relationship that he had with, with, the, with God Almighty. Hallelujah. That God relented. You can you will you will see how Daniel prayed when he remembered what Jeremiah had prophesied that 70 years that they will be in Babylon and the time had come and Daniel remembered what prophecy what Jeremiah had given and he remembered that word and he prayed that prayer and God answered his prayer hallelujah he was on a fast for 21 days and God remembered what Daniel was, uh, Daniel, was, uh, Daniel was speaking the words of prophecy which Jeremiah had given. Hallelujah. So today when we come before God in his, uh, through his word and pray. And through the spirit, the spirit will give that utterance. The spirit will give you the utterance to pray. Prayer is not just uh, asking, give me this, give me that. It's not, I don't call it as a prayer. I don't pray that prayer. I don't, I don't have that prayer in myself. I don't get to the Father to ask me for the things of this world. I don't ask for things. But I, I come before him because he is my loving Father. He knows. He loves me. He calls me by name. He has carved me in the palms of my hands. And he has called me by name. Hallelujah. He knows me. Hallelujah. He, if I am known by him, he is too big for me to ask him anything. Hallelujah. He's too holy. And he's too great, hallelujah, that at his breath, the stars were made. At his breath, the stars were formed. The sun, which today no one can see. The moon, which no one can reach, hallelujah. Only those who are going there, hallelujah. But no one, no one, no one. <coughs> he has named the stars, each one of them, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This big God that we serve. And we need to love him above all things, hallelujah, and give him all that we have, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That we might have that and deeper intimacy with him in prayer and love him and worship him and give ourselves fully to him, hallelujah. hallelujah. The third one is to meditate the word, to meditate on God's word every day. <coughs> hallelujah. This is why in the, in, we need to mature in the, in the spirit, uh, to mature in God's word. In, in, in the realm of the spirit, we need to mature in spiritually. In, this is the third one is the most important thing is to, to have the meditation of God's word every day. To meditate on his word, to, to read his word, to understand his word and to, to, to take, you know, we need to take efforts. We need to buy a study Bible. We need to read the Bible and take uh, the, the cross references to the Bible, whatever the scriptures are, the cross references are there so that we can go and study what uh, the scripture men, uh, means, why, where it is connected to the Old Testament, what it, uh, what it means, why we need to understand, how we need to understand this word. So we mature in, in uh, so we grow in that word, so we meditate on that word, we chew the word. And, we, and, and, and that nourishment comes into our spirit. Uh, and that word goes and settles in our spirit. Uh, it goes and settles in our heart. Uh, when it goes and settles in our heart, uh, when we understand God's word deeply, it goes and settles in our heart. Then what happens? Uh, when you, in the time of your trouble, in the time of your storms, uh, that word will come alive. The spirit will bring that word to you. The, word, the, the spirit will give you utterance. And through that word, you will be able to pray. Through that word, you will be able to call out to God. Hallelujah. And you will speak to him. Hallelujah. And he will answer you. He will reveal to you himself to you. Because when you call out to him in faith. Hallelujah. You will, faith comes through. Faith is coming throughout. Through the hearing. Hearing of the message. 
we need to build our faith in in his word to grow in his word so that our faith is increasing so when our faith is built up so we will be able to face the situations in our lives hallelujah you can read the word second timothy chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 where uh, paul st paul speaks to timothy and he, and he's encouraging him to build on his word to grow in the word and to be strong in the word hallelujah second timothy chapter 3 verse 15 and 16 thank you lord hallelujah so we have the revelation of god's word in our hearts james chapter 1 verse 23 and 25 where uh, very very says that uh, you should not be a people who read the word and forget the next moment there are some people we do not know what we have read the word in the morning only we do not know what we have uh, what we have heard the word hallelujah i ask many people when they go for mass and they come back what is the readings reading they will shake their head which reading we don't know which reading it was This is how we go uh, to hear the word. We go to hear the word as uh, as we are, uh, and I don't know. It's it's a shocking thing actually. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. James chapter one verse twenty three and twenty five says, "Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at him, looks at his face in a mirror, and after looking at himself, goes away and immediately forgets what he looks like." is look as like, is like a person who has looked at his mirror and he forgets how he looks somebody some some of us we read we read the word like this we read the word and we forget what we have read hallelujah thank you jesus but only those who intently look at the word and do what the word is says it is they who will be blessed the word of god says it is they who will be blessed not those who have read the word and because uh, somebody will ask him did you read the word yes i read the word what did what, we have never looked into that word and we have not digested the word and we have not taken the word into our hearts and we have not got into that blessings thank you jesus the fourth point the fourth point is to be filled to be filled with the holy spirit how important it is uh, to be filled with the holy spirit every day hallelujah ephesians 5:18 do not get drunk in wine which leads to debauchery instead be filled with the holy spirit do not be drunk with wine is not that uh, the physical wine that we are drinking there are so many who drink wine which is uh, drinking the the everything else in this world drinking everything meaning the world the news we want to know everything and everything about the world but we do not want to know what the spirit has spirit wants to give us so we do not want to be filled with the holy spirit if we are not thirsty and hungry for the holy spirit every day and asking the lord to fill us every day we need to ask the lord for this grace that we will be always be filled with the holy spirit every day hallelujah because without the holy spirit we will not be able to overcome the temptations we will not be able to overcome anything and everything that the enemy is throwing at us we will always be beaten down hallelujah in the fifth point is uh, a fellowship with believers this is this is a fellowship that we have there are there are places where we have fellowship in the churches where people come together for prayer meetings the gathering of the fellow, gathering of the saints is a very important hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 to 25 it is it is here when we need to come together we need should not stop coming together and fellowshipping with our fellow believers because there when we come together there we are coming we we, we are built we are building each other we are helping each other we are growing in the spirit we are becoming we are test, giving our testimonies when a testimony of a brother or a sister it helps the other brother and the other sister hallelujah the testimony is helping the the word is being when it is being preached it is helping us so encouraging it is encouraging one another so it is so important to have fellowship with the believers hallelujah hebrews chapter 10 verse 24 and 25 then the sixth point is a discipline we need to discipline our lives uh, many of us are everything is there we go for prayer meetings we go we do prayers we we say prayers we read the word but there is no discipline in our lives our lives are not uh, 
Our lives are not controlled by the spirit. Our lives are haywire. Today we speak words of life. The next thing we do is we can, we are, our tongues are not controlled. We speak negative words so easily. We pull, we are, we encourage one another. The next thing we pull another, pull the person easily. The next thing we put, uh, we put our children down. We put our spouses down. We say all the negativity about the leaders. We say negativity about all those who are spiritual leaders and talk all the negative things. <coughs> and we put our bodies in in darkness. Our, our spirits go down. We lose our, our, our minds. We lose our hearts. And we put ourselves down. Everything we need to, we need to be disciplined in ourselves. If we do not have a tight rein over our tongues, we cannot be growing spiritually at all. Everything has to be taken in prayer. Everything has to be taken through His Word. And has to be has to be led by the Spirit of God. If what I am saying, what I am doing, is it pleasing in the eyes of God, is what we need to look at. Am I controlled? Is what I am going to say, what I am going to speak, is it pleasing to God? Is important. Hallelujah. In Colossians 3.17 says, Whatever I say, whatever I do, I do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving glory to the Father in heaven. Whatever I say, whatever I do, I need to give glory to the Father. If that, is, that thing what I'm going to say, that thing what I'm going to do is not glorifying the Father and, and the name of Jesus is not lifted up, we need to be very careful about our lives. Hallelujah. And the seventh one is the grace that God has given us. The grace. We need to, we need to be the people who will be, who will be the people who will offer that, be, be, be available for, for people around us. Hallelujah. We need to be the people who will be able to do the smallest thing that we can do to help somebody, to reach out to somebody, to be a, to be a witness to somebody, to partake in, in someone's, uh, someone is going through pain or someone is going through a suffering or someone who is uh, going through difficult moments of their lives. We need to be able to go reach out to them and bring that grace of God into their lives. We need to be able to pray with them, spend time with them. Pray with them, give them the support, give them the help that they need so that we can encourage them, so that we can build them up. That grace is given to us. We need to use, uh, let that grace be used for the greater glory of God. Hallelujah. We need to let that grace be used for the greater glory of God. I remember when, when even when the most difficult times, uh, I, I used to be working in my office. Uh, I used to work for 12 hours, 13 hours, sometimes uh, the whole day and the whole morning I used to work. In that tired moment also, wherever God is giving me an, a small opportunity to do anything, God gave me the grace to, to reach out to those people. Hallelujah. To help people in troubles, to help people in the difficulties. Thank you, Jesus. When you make yourself available for God, then that grace will be flowing out of you. Then the grace will be available for people. Because you have made yourself available for him. Hallelujah. And the eighth, eighth point is, uh, when you go through most difficult moments of your life, in the sufferings, in those moments of your difficult moments, hallelujah. You know, in those moments, you should not lose that opportunity that God gives you. Because these are the moments when you grow more and more closer to the Lord. That's what I, I, I always, that's what St. Paul said, I rejoice in my sufferings. Why? It brings him more and more, draws him more and more closer to the Lord. Hallelujah. In that, we are able to experience more and more of God in our lives. We, are, we experience his closeness. We experience his, his joy in our hearts, uh, in the midst of our trials. The joy of the Lord is our strength. In the midst of our trials, his joy will be with us. His strength will be with us. We'll see his hand working in our lives. We'll be able to experience him more and more closer to him in our lives. Hallelujah. So, so out of this, we need to, we need to you, let God move through us and draw us more and more closer through that suffering that we are going through. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. So these are the eight points uh, that, that, that we need to take hold of it and so that we'll grow more strong and more spiritually and become more and more, more and more closer and aware of His glory, of His presence in our lives uh, and be a, be a people filled with the Holy Spirit. That will be spiritually matured people and we 
be people that we can bring glory unto his name wherever we are hallelujah thank you father for speaking your word to us lord thank you for opening our hearts lord to hear your word that we become more and more mature oh lord thank you lord that you are more than enough for us lord help us to grow spiritually oh lord help us to grow in our in our in our hearts in our minds in our thinking in our speaking in our walking with you oh god that we become more and more like you oh god hallelujah because you are all that we need you are all that we need in our lives without you we are nothing oh lord hallelujah let your kingdom come oh god let your will be done in our lives in jesus mighty name we pray amen hallelujah